We just had a live stream on the Anycubic Viper and I owe you a few things from it. And it's important for me to tell you about that because as of filming, you can still get it for $299 US. Let's get into it. There you are. Welcome back. The live stream for the Anycubic Viper was amazing. It's probably one of the best live streams I've ever had. The machine went together incredibly easy, plus it worked. It totally worked. Everything worked on stream. It was the happiest of times. And it was the reason why that milkshake afterwards tasted so, so good. From the live stream, there were two things that we talked about and I owed you afterwards. One was this Chep Cube that I printed right here. And I owed you a better caliper measurement. We'll take care of that. But also in that live stream, we started this print. This is a TARDIS dice tower downloaded from PrusiaPrinters.org and it looks good. There are some issues and it's because of the slicing profile that they exist. We're gonna talk about that as well. And then we're gonna test it because I brought my Farkle game, which is full of dice. What dice tower is complete without a little test? I mean, if I can't roll dice through it and it's, it doesn't work, it's terrible. So we're gonna test it. But first, let's dive into the Chep Cube. When I printed the Chep Cube, one of the <laughs> slicer settings that I didn't adjust was the brim. And so this Chep Cube has a nice brim all around it. So just using a fingernail, we can remove the brim and have ourselves a Chep Cube. There it is. Now I owe you some measurements. We're gonna measure the X, we're gonna measure the Y, and then we're gonna measure the Z or Z. In the stream, I wasn't able to do that precisely because I had, where are they? I had this. It's digital calipers, but it's without a battery. And so I did my best to just read the, <laughs> the markings on it. And when we're talking about tenths or one hundredths of a millimeter, we really need some digital assistance. And so I've got this. This is from Voltivo. It was sent to me a while ago and it measures to the one hundredths. And so what I wanna do is measure X, measure Y, and then measure Z or Z and see what we get. First, first will be X. Well, actually, let's first, let's verify that we're zeroed. And we are zeroed. Now let's see what the X face is. Where are we at? We are at 20.26 and that's actually not too bad. Let's go to Y. Bring that in right there. 20.24. Okay. Now Z. And we are at, ooh, 19.96. X and Y were both above 20 millimeters. And it was by just a little bit. And I think I know why. And during the live stream, Chuck was in the chat and, and told us a suggestion. And it makes a lot of sense. We have bulging on the corners. And that can be because the E-steps aren't correct. And so one of the next steps I wanna do with this machine is check and adjust the E-steps to make sure if I'm extruding 100 millimeters of filament, I'm actually extruding 100 millimeters of filament. And so that could be why it's not 20 or closer to 20 on X and Y just because of the bulging corners. Now Z or Z, 19 point, what was it, 96? One of the reasons why that can be less than 20 is because the leveling wasn't perfect and the first layer might be squished down more than it should be. And since this does auto leveling, similar to the CR6SC from Creality, where it has a strain gauge in the hot end that allows it to judge pressure, then it means we just need to set the offset a little bit higher so that the first layer isn't as squished. This is why a 20 millimeter cube, or in this case, a CHEP cube, is really valuable because it tells us some of the things that we can adjust on our 3D printers to make them better and perform more precisely. So checking the E-steps and changing the E-steps can make our flow better. And then checking the offset for the auto level on Z or Z is going to give us a better first layer and a more accurate height. That's kind of awesome. Just a tiny little bit of filament is gonna give us the ideas for fixing our printer and making it better. Now though, there we go. See, that's how we do that. Now though, we've got the TARDIS dice tower. This was downloaded from PrusiaPrinters.org. This was sliced in Cura and it was Cura 421. It was the one that was found on the SD card for the machine. And it was sliced using the Cura profile from the SD card. And actually this is printed in, what is this? This is uh, Filament One's PLA Pro Select. It's a good material. In fact, it's a sparkly shiny blue. 
I really like it. And it just screamed TARDIS. So we had to do this. It's got a textured PEI flexible build plate. So now it's time to take it off and take a look at it. There are some issues and we need to see if dice will run through, right? Here we go. If I look on the screen, it does say it took 30 hours, 35 minutes. There was a time lapse generated for this using the WISE camera, wherever that's at. It's okay. And you, you get to see some of it, but really it's nothing to write home about. More importantly, I think we need to get this off. Ready? Ready? <laughs> it just released. It just released. That is amazing. Let me move the printer out of the way and then we'll take a look at this model. And we will dive deep. There we go. This is the TARDIS Dice Tower. And uh, it, looks, it looks good. It actually looks really, really good considering that the filament that we used wasn't calibrated to the profile we were using. There are some issues with it. And let's talk about it before we take the brim off. Well, one, there's a brim. I forgot about that in the slicer settings. So we'll be able to take that off. If you look on this front face, there's a couple things that are, that, that are going on that shouldn't be going on. One, I believe we were printing too fast. And you can see that there's some reverberations here in the windows. And that's when the head is making a, a move that's really quick where it has to make like a 90 degree move essentially or some sort of move that causes it to stop and then move in another direction really quickly. And if the belts aren't tight enough, you will get some wobble, just a little bit. Or if you're going too fast, even if you have tight belts, there's no way to get, get away from that. And so it could be that we're just printing a little too fast for this machine or in its current state. So I'll check the belts. I've tightened them a little bit when we were streaming, but I can tighten the X axis just a little bit more because it seems that's where it's prevalent. But also you can see the infill through the perimeters. <laughs> Darn it. Within slicing engines, you've got a setting that defines the percentage of overlap between infill and perimeters. And what you can do is adjust that. And so if the infill is overlapping the perimeters quite a bit, then just through the sheer fact that this plastic is gonna cool and contract, uh, you can kind of see it. Also, you might use more perimeters. I think I used two, two should be enough. And so my guess is infill overlap is just a little bit too high and we can adjust it. But really though, other than those problems, for 299, the machine itself seems to be performing really well. It looks to be a really good platform that allows for some adjustments. And in the end for 299, you're getting 245 by 245 by 260 in a build volume and auto leveling and filament sensing. I don't know, that seems really good. We really need to test this. Let's get the brim off. Let's get the dice out. Let's see if this works. <laughs> and just like that, the brims are removed. Obviously a razor blade works, but if you have a deburring tool, like what, the one I can't find, that would work best. This is a cover and this is the top. The top has these holes that fit these little nubs and they fit just fine. And then this ugh, goes just like that. So there we go. Got ourselves a wibbly wobbly, timey wimey machine. Let's get some dice. This is the game of Farkle. I don't know if any of you have ever played Farkle, but kind of fun. I'll put a link to a Farkle game on Amazon in case you want to check it out. So I've got six regulation Farkle dice, one through six. And so if I get, well, actually here, I'm going to leave this to you. What I'm going to do is put six dice through the TARDIS dice tower. I want you to try and predict the number that is represented when we add up all the faces of the dice. This is kind of exciting. I don't have any prizes for this, but if this is fun, if enough people guess, maybe we do stuff like this in the future. Here we go. You ready? Five, six, nine. Ooh, that was fun. 15, 19, and 22. There we go, 22. Did you guess 22? I don't know, we'll have to check the comments. That wraps up our little video here on the Anycubic Viper 3D printer. It's 299 and there's still some available at that price. Through the Chep Cube, we were able to find some of the things that need adjustment. And through the TARDIS dice tower, we were also able to find some of the 
you know, little things that need adjustment. But otherwise, it seems to be, at first glance, a pretty solid platform that I'm excited to print a lot more things with it. And so we'll get a review done sooner rather than later. And I'm kind of excited for that. But listen, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, print more dice towers. And as always, high five.